Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cougar City Podcast. Today, we have Bob, JPY, Jen, and myself, Cougars Bay. Uh, Bolt is unable to get with us today, but hey, we want to bolt before our last podcast of the year, but uh, we can't have everything. Jen took him. Jen put him in the basement. <laughs> so, <laughs> in the basement. He's in the basement today, um, but uh, no, we have a couple of good topics this time of the year uh we always start with uh the state of the game and i mean it's it's an interesting one the game has been kind of eh the last couple of uh updates um i know jp has a lot of thoughts into it so let's get started jp jp hello jp <laughs> jp <laughs> All right, sorry, I forgot I muted on the I forgot I muted on the Discord thing. No, so um, I don't know, I don't know where to start on my rants. I don't know how I always start them. <laughs> um, so I, I honestly, Cougar, I don't know where to start. I'm so I was so frustrated the other day with the, uh, you know, tank. Obviously, there's a lot of um. Well, the the, there, the tank, with, yeah, with, the the tank block is, and, is such like and there's not a lot of tanks. I feel like, well, I feel like in general with like support roles and things like that, there's not a lot of people out there wanting to do it, especially like in the end game. I, I it, there just seems to be like, I mean, it always there always was like a demand for really good tanking like at that level, but I feel like now with like the block glitch. Um, it's kind of, I mean, there's people that just aren't playing. You can really feel it in the game when you're trying to, um, when you're trying to get groups ready and stuff. Um, you know, I, I think that the fact that Zoss didn't get on it right away should tell you all you need to know about how much they actually, like, really want to continue with the game. I feel like it's just make as much money as we can until it, like, until it fizzles out, um, you know, with that and the, you know, them announcing not doing any more PVP content. I mean, everyone's hopeful, like every, every announcement or whatever, every, every quarter that there's going to be PVP content and there isn't, but I think that was like a big wake up call for a lot of people. Um, I will say, I don't think the glitch is as detrimental as people initially thought. Everyone gives a re knee jerk reaction. It's just about like playing around it. Granted, we shouldn't have to play around it, but um i just i i think that's like poor on them to not fix that they knew they knew it was an issue before it even went live on like console and then to extend it again and not do it in the first incremental on console and to leave it for like almost a month yeah, i don't maybe. think that's like acceptable i know? mean imagine the pc players that had to deal with this because like they're the ones that had to deal with this longer than we have um i mean it, granted it was like two weeks longer but still like it's a pretty big, you know, thing. Well, with... I think it's more frustrating, though, to yeah. people, like, than it is, like, detrimental. I mean, it is detrimental to the gameplay, but, again, you can still get stuff done. Like, there's a lot of, like, people throwing fits about it and things like that, and, you know, unfortunately, like, you know, there's not a lot of tanks anyways, like, out there, and it's pretty much slows like the state of the game try to get a queue for something or a random you know i love running like random dungeons and it's 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 terrible you can't even even on a tank i can just tell i feel you can feel like i mean maybe it's just the time of the year people are out like holiday shopping and stuff like that you know i'm sure that i'm sure zenimax's numbers are down anyways right now um but it, it just seems really bad right now. I mean, the worst I've ever seen it. Bob, Bob is a tank. Uh, I mean, Bob, what are your experiences with it? Um, you know, what have you seen? It is frustrating. The only time that I that I've really noticed the the bug happen is is actually uh, when you teleport through a door mm -hmm. to like a next room and the weapon sheaths and then you try to take your weapon out and that's when i notice the block bug the most often um it can happen if the fight resets a lot um honestly the biggest issue that i had that got me clapped a couple of times last night and jp can attest to this i dodge rolled to not take some extra damage from a boss 
And because I, my block doesn't re-engage right away, I have to double click my block. Like it didn't register quick enough and, and I got clapped. Um, that's, so that's frustrating as a tank when you know you can do something and you're having to relearn how to do a fight. So I, you know, I understand that, it's, that it is really frustrating, um, especially for seasoned tanks who have always done something one way and now they have to have a workaround, basically, like JP said. Um, you, you, you adjusted, though. That's the point, though. Yeah. You can't adjust to it. Well, yeah, yeah. good You're tanks... Good player. Yeah, good tanks yeah. are going to be able to adjust to any any environment in the game. Um, and, I mean, obviously, we have good players here that, that can adjust to any situation. But, you know, like Bob said, it's just frustrating having to relearn the fight um, at a different, you know, portion because the game is just like this so but yeah it, it's not as prevalent as the the forum warriors you know complaining about it, it's not like every time you go to block you can't block or if you die once you're gonna have a block bug you know does it slow you down especially for us uh you know the content we were doing yesterday was um Times Vegas, and so and we're skipping, and we got to block meteors while we're skipping shamans, right? And the hard bones. Yeah, exactly. So it's frustrating if even the DPS can't block. Now they got to port out, they got to leave the instance, they got to come back. You know, you're wasting time trying to progress through this this Dawnbringer group because we're we're wasting time. That's that's my biggest issue with it is that yeah, there's workarounds. You're wasting my time when we have to reset fights because we can't block because we can't do a base mechanic in the game. Yeah, I mean you, you, that that's that's my time really is not frustrating. <laughs> yeah, well, time is money, you know. Like that's that's a big thing. Um, at least with me and my husband, we we don't like to waste time as much because time is essentially money that you're wasting. And I know Merck definitely looks at that uh, very 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 carefully. And he doesn't like to waste money, so he doesn't like to waste time. That's one of his pet peeves. So I definitely understand. I mean, can you imagine Merc is a tank? Oh my god, he'd be so pissed. <laughs> he would be well, so he pissed. Did it before I've seen yeah. him tank. No, I've seen <laughs> I've, I've seen, seen him tank too. Is just like it, he would be one of those people in the forums that rage at Sauce because of that. And I mean, I can just see that. But uh. And I mean the the PVP thing as well. Like that's that's um yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ca like, I cannot I believe they said no more PVP content. You know. Not this year or whatever, but or next year or whatever. But I mean, you're iso You're just limiting like the amount of. You know your your game base yeah. you're just alienating so now you've upset the dps like with update 35 or whatever which mm -hmm. it's it's not that bad like i i wanted to point i i crunched numbers i know i, I discussed it with you guys mm -hmm. like from update 34 to update 36 like kinds ages like hard mode fall graven average dps top pc logs 144k was the average parse of the top five dps like at the top of the log pre-buff or pre-nerf and then this patch it's like 136k is the average and there's going to be a lot more entry points of data like on that top five so that's only like a that's a slight slight difference of like six percent i think is what i figured mm -hmm. I my math is I, I think it was about yeah. A six, yeah that's like a six percent dps loss okay now throw in the fact that we've nerfed boss health by 10 percent that's actually a gain that's like a three per it, it was six and a half percent so that's like a three and a half percent gain in the effective amount of dps you need to actually clear content so um you know people that are listening to this you know maybe and think that like i don't know they don't want to come back to the game because of that or whatever it's actually on I, if, if you're if you're min maxing like you should and following correct builds and comping your team correctly using pillager all that stuff then you should actually have an easier time but now but now we've alienated like tanks with this glitch too so it's yeah like when does it stop <laughs> when and does it end? that's one thing that jen and i have noticed a lot lately is that there's been teams that have not been optimizing to the full maybe they just haven't 
research, you know, like JP, I know you're always researching, um, you know, new comps and trying to get the best out of the chill team, um, uh, potentially and the best out of everybody in there. And we've noticed that people are not using pillager either correctly or not using pillager at all. And then they're complaining that, oh, there's not enough DPS. Well, the comp that you kind of put out there is not correct either to maximize mm -hmm. that. Not optimal, yeah. So, like... And that's what I find too in the, in the state of the game is um, over the last couple weeks, I ran a lot of pugs out of Craig, Craig Lauren and like pugs out of guilds. And I wanted to see like what is like the average groups doing that aren't like pre-made comped teams. And overall, the quality of teams has gone way down. Yeah. Like, there is such a disconnect between who's available for trials right now and the skill to do them. Um, like, content that we would consider, like, pretty standard and easy to complete. People are joining with very little experience. VSS. VSS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, Rock not knowing growth. what to do. Like, there's... there. So, I feel like there's lots of people available and wanting to run trials but like there's a disconnect of like where they're ready to start it's they haven't been in any teaching runs they're joining up in vet content saying yep i can do this and then they're like not following along um obviously like it makes it harder when teams aren't comped but that's a pug like you should be able to you know play at a little bit of a level where you're expecting that but when there's just people coming into content that's been out for a long time and still not knowing what to do like there's there's much more new players to the game maybe or people that have like finally you know breaking into some some trials runs but have done like little to no research maybe um there's people that have like that clears but maybe didn't you know they were they were blended into the group so they never learned like what they were doing now like you can see them getting exposed in in content and it's just like I didn't see the level of players just like as like a temperature so bad before it's it's, well, it's... um like I know a lot of vet veteran players are either like only running in their pro groups that know what they're doing and are not playing at all and uh and then there's no like maybe there's a need right now for some like teaching guilds and people just aren't willing to say yeah I need some help you know well, yeah, there's a inf big influx of newer players, which is a good sign. I, yes. You see, you got to figure, yes. you see someone that's like 800 yeah. CP, if they've grinded, yeah. like that's a couple months, like of casual yeah. play. It could even be sooner, like a thousand CP casually. That's about a new player six months old. You know, they're mm -hmm. not like, you know, th and that's casual. I mean, you can, of course, like grind like faster than that for sure. But, yeah. um, you know, that's, that's the thing. And there's like a big influx of like, newer players so i guess that's good but on the yeah. second hand it's... somewhere along the line they need to like i don't know one not be joining veteran trials if they don't know the core mechanic of that trial they need to obviously look that up first or, or just two, say something just, like, or just find, say something find some, yeah, say something say hey can somebody explain what i need to do here um because several times i've seen the lead ask does everybody know mechanics and nobody chirps up yeah you know like, don't be embarrassed to say no i don't can i get a rundown real quick of what's gonna happen here so i don't wipe the group you know i mean to be honest i don't mind i don't mind teaching um you know in, no. the, in the pug runs i don't i don't mind i do yeah. i do that i do pug runs as well to to see you know really who's out there and a lot of times you you find some good players that have a lot of good potential just have never right, been yeah. given the chance they've never been like you know aimed in the right direction yeah so i i do like you know pugging because of that um yeah i don't i don't do it in dungeons as much anymore but i know jp does and he he sees uh good players as well through there but uh i mean in trials you can kind of see that as well um you yeah. know, find some good players but i mean i don't mind people saying like hey you know if if you don't know what you're doing like i don't i don't mind yeah there's, there's in some of these newer dlc trials there are mechanics that if yeah. you don't do something correctly and like even the dps has a role to do you're going to wipe the group and it's it's simple things like if you're if you're doing a DSR, it's not picking up the correct bubble, or you get rune and you like go and stand inside the opposite bubble. Like that's not the, how you execute that mechanic. And so it's better to speak up and say something. Can somebody tell me how this works? Than to rip a run, you know, because mm -hmm. people who are there and know what they're doing are obviously 
they don't want to be in there on like one boss for like two hours and have no achieve nothing done, no gear. Like they used up all their pots. It's it's not fair to everybody. So go ahead and speak up. Yeah, I mean, I, go go ahead, Bob. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it, I also think it's it's a bigger issue, like you're saying, the newer players. So you have a vacuum of some of the older players, or you know, maybe leaving the game, or or only running with their groups because they're tired tired of that kind of stuff. But back when you know, back a few years ago, when when I was playing, like you didn't jump to the newest content. You did the old yeah, content yeah, first, definitely. yeah. And you worked your way up to the new content because the old content would teach you mechanics that you would have to apply in the newer content. Mm -hmm. Because DOS doesn't, yeah. I mean, DOS doesn't do anything amazing. They're just, you know, it's changing all, the look of a, a, of a certain mechanic. Like yeah. in DSR, the twins, it's very similar. It's in twins and Vmo. Thinking wise, as Vmo, yeah. right? So, mm -hmm. but if you've never done V-Ball, you've never seen something like that where you have to work as a team and you can wipe a group with, you know, not doing your, your set mechanic. Mm -hmm. And so I, not only that, but then you have the narrative of, well, if you can hit a hundred, hundred plus K on the dummy, you can do any content. You're, you're ready for vet trial. No, <laughs> no, 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 100%, no, no, you're not. You can sit still and you can be a parse monkey uh, and which is perfectly fine, but you're not ready for vet trials. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, that narrative, in, in my opinion, is still very, very strong. Yeah, I would much rather have take somebody who Awareness can hit 60k, stay alive, yeah. and very aware of mechanics over somebody who can 100k. Oh. And yeah, is that's dead how our team's built. Seconds. Yeah, that's how the chill team's built. That is, mostly. yep, that is Anyways, exactly how like the, the chill foundation team. Yep. of the chill team of how this team is built. Yep, yep. The and there's just part. not enough of that out there. I think people. People focus on the dummy. They get the dummy number, and then they go put up a parse in a in a higher end trial group, you know, Discord, and say, "Okay, well, I'm ready for trials." And then they get put in. They wipe the group, and then they get pissed, and then they get dropped, and then they have this bad taste in their mouth because they think they're ready, according to the forums and according to all these warriors out there, but they're not. And they can't. They they can't. There's a disconnect there. They can't put it together. So we have to be very careful right now in the state of the game. I think is in a very yeah, and precarious situation because we have a new players. It's going to take a lot more patience to run files. Yeah. And this this is where Project Vitality was supposed to help, and it just failed because, I mean, partly because all the leaders left. Yeah, there was because, no, there's no raid leads that want to teach. Yeah, because of the state of the game and update 35 and update 36, um, that was the biggest issue, but. I mean, I still think there's enough people out there that that could help. <clears throat> and, I mean, I really do say, like, it, it is beneficial for, even in pugs, for people to say, hey, you know, can somebody explain to me? Even if they whisper it to the raid lead, like, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, say something to, to better help with the fight. Um, and I mean, mm -hmm. it's not just on the raid leads to, to know the content and to explain the content to people. Like there's yeah. newer players should be researching a little bit. Um, and there's plenty watching videos, yeah. understanding the, yeah, there's plenty of YouTube videos that show, um, you know, mechanics and such yeah. from a DPS point of view. Um, I think Bob, like, I think I Sino the, does um, it too, right? Sino does, I know Eight Puppies does, like... Yeah, they... all about mechanics, yeah. Go in and, like, watch, you know, what do I need to do here? What's gonna happen? Exactly. Um, you if... know, what, what's the core <laughs> thing I need to watch out for? Yeah, if anything, there's not that many help videos out there for, like, healing in tanks. <laughs> for, mm -hmm, for that, yeah. I, like, those are really the ones that need the most help, in my so, opinion. So... And to highlight this, the, the VDSR I did last night, while we were on the door, the tank, the one tank, had never completed the trial. He was watching on mic while we were grouping a how-to the twins video. Yeah. So when he got there, besides a couple tips from the other tank, he was ready to see what, like, what was happening in, in real life. It wasn't him wiping us, even though he's never completed that place. It was DPS not executing bubbles properly. And that... Every single time. Interrupters, runes, 
bubble switching, like the other. Even though he was sitting there learning on the fly, right as he walked in the door, he took the time to do that. It was the other people who just said, kept quiet and said, "I don't know what I'm doing," or didn't say, "I don't know what I'm doing," and was the problem. And it's it's unfortunate. It it really is unfortunate and. I mean, I know the trial, the trial is still, like, VDSR is still a new trial to a lot of people. And yeah. It's still a hard trial to complete. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, not, the average team is not completing that trial just yet. No. Um, there's maybe at most, like, I guess 100 people in PC, or not PC, in PS4 or PS5 and A that can complete that trial. Um, yeah, it's the first box locks you behind a very heavy mechanic where everybody has a yeah, role to do. Yeah, I, yeah. Th I think I mean I'm I might be I might have the wrong um but <clears throat> just PS PS4 and A like I think 100 people are the ones that are completing that fight. Um I don't think there's many but I mean maybe maybe you know, people will get frustrated and, and kind of find out that they need to research or ask mm -hmm. questions, you know. I'm, yeah, I'm if open. you're going to join Pugs, just speak up. It, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it might not be a teaching run, but if they say they're, like, creating a Pug to farm gear, that's not the right place to be doing it. Like, go farm it with your team because you're not just going to be in and out in a Pug. Well, it's not that easy of a trial. <clears throat> no, of course not. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't really think there's anything else in the state of the game other than what we have mentioned that that is really something that should be brought up. I think those, you know, I really do wish those would get um, a little bit more, I guess, solutions. In it's not just sauce. Um, like the game, the game players the players themselves in the game like really do need to stand up and it helped that new influx of players because without them like and the other players not coming back like that the game is going to die if people just stop playing it and yeah there's a big turnover right now between yeah. it and mm -hmm. older players leaving and newer players coming in Definitely so you can you see it everywhere so i mean it's it'll be more beneficial for us to like not be as toxic to players and try to get a bit more patience. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I don't mind being patient if people speak up about yeah. not knowing stuff. Don't tell me like, um, don't like hold your tongue and say, yeah, yeah we're good. And then like, and don't be, a, cause we bite. and don't be a toxic casual either. Like I, I know Jen and I have, ex well, JP as well. <laughs> we have experienced the toxic casual in the last couple of days, like of them thinking they know everything. Like, if you don't have the content cleared, then you don't know everything. I'm sorry, but, or, you know. You or don't. if you are an older player that left at 810 a couple of years ago, you left, you've been away for a while. Um, whatever you did, you know, three months ago, six months ago, whatever. the mm -hmm. game, ESO, yeah. is ESO is a progressive game. So if you're not up to date on what's going on in this patch, you need to be quiet <laughs> yeah. and learn it like because it changes. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. not a lot changed, but I mean, if it's been a longer break, just because you cleared the hardest content, you know, three years ago or two years ago or whatever, it changed at 810 does not mean that like um, you're actually detrimental if you're not like min max correctly to this patch. That's too far gone. If it's a patch or two, it's not as, as big of a deal. But the thing is, is like whenever you come back from the game, you should have a new player mm -hmm. mindset, even if you are an experienced player. Yes. Because you've been out. Like, it's just the nature of ESO. Like, you know, the people that play consistently know. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, JP has warned me that whenever he sees a DPS orb and, and my... My DPS runs it. I don't mean a DPS, no. but I'm like, yeah, I haven't. No, I'm I'm just agreeing with you. Like, I haven't kept my tune up to date that there is a better way to run it now. And yeah. and there's there's clue ins like, yeah, two patches ago, everybody was doing that. But it's not the one best thing fine. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah one, one orb in the group. When you see but, four orbs yeah. go off, you know, your DPS, their builds are out of date. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> like <laughs> that, that that's a perfect and, and the thing is is it's not as detrimental on a dps but imagine like that same mentality with sets on a support role and then mm -hmm. now throw in the the tension that's already in the game the tanks that that are tanking with the block bug mm -hmm. they're already frustrated and their level of you know bullshit filter is already full so they're not really in the mood to deal with any of this other like nonsense and it's just it's kind of creating like as far as like pugs go it's kind of created like a, a bit of a toxic state with the newer players and that it's kind of like a perfect storm not that people are terrible terrible i don't want people to be afraid to join pugs or anything like that but no, yeah. it's definitely different than where what where we were like three months ago or two months mm -hmm. ago i mean sure. to, to be honest i don't mind these little parse monkeys joining pugs um <clears throat> but just let us teach you you know like i i get what bob is saying like you'd rather have a 60k dps who can stay alive but you know you have to get there you have to to learn the game in some way shape or form um, no i think bob's point was like just the the parse like the harder content yeah like the, the hard modes like yeah I, I, I really do yeah you, you build the tune you push to the dummy and you're like okay let let me in on your team you know like mm -hmm. you don't you don't start up up at top you have to still learn like the mechanics and be a team player yeah i mean i i agree i agree i mean there's you should have at least have done that content on regular vet <laughs> let's just say that and be proficient in, in it that's I mean, I think if you're proficient in it, um, people can teach survivability a lot better than parsing, in my opinion, um, if the person is willing to learn. Um, <clears throat> and I mean, once, once the good part about parsing is that the raid lead, whenever they're seeing the parses, they see that you know how to, um, how to parse and how to stand still in DPS where there's going to be some fights in the game that, that you have to do that. You have to stand still and DPS. So at least that's, you know, something that you can do. And it, it's just to know the rotation. You know, you know, it's if you know your rotation correctly, that's that's a that's what parsing is really for me. It's to make sure that you know what you're doing um, when you're standing still and yeah. knowing your rotation. But <clears throat> Other than other than that, other than the the topics that we've stated in the state of the game, um, that's basically what's going on. But <clears throat> one uh, one cool thing is we're bringing the Christmas sauce wish list, and I'm pretty sure JP has a lot <laughs> to talk about. Mm. You know, maybe what what uh what you guys would like to have in sauce like in a wish list for sauce to do like what would you like the game to to incorporate i know a lot of people are talking about the new classes um i really do think it, there's a monk class coming up but i know you said druid but i i really think it's the monk class but no way dude <clears throat> it could be just uh it could be um what hey. is this like our top like two wish list things yeah yeah. Okay. I mean, what would you like to see, uh, Jen? What would you like to see in in uh, ESO in the game? What would you like for Sauce to maybe incorporate? My first wish list would be like less changes, stable game, less changes. Okay. I don't want to have to see people get like burnt out of the game for like having to completely change what DPS was doing, like this patch versus next patch and they have to like completely like oh we don't use staffs anymore i gotta go farm up my daggers and you know it's it's got to be less like big changes like that for sure so just stable running game where mechanics work and obviously like a good running game okay um what else would i want to see um, you, you had mentioned before PvP. I don't PvP a lot, but like when I go in, I'm just pretty much farming um, um, AP points. And I know the PvPers want to have a cry and everything about like no new content. And it's like, what, what content do you need anyway? You don't play 
most people aren't playing the map to like win the campaign for the month. They're out there just fighting in fields, you know, having fun, exposing people. Um, they added the hammer a while back. They added bridges, but I mean, like, what content is needed? Just make it stable. Just make the game run. And like, I want to be able to join Grey Host, and not lag so hardly defending a keep that my skills won't go off. It's fun to play as it is, as long as my skills will work. I actually going going back to that PVP thing, Jen. Um, one thing they could do is you know maybe add um in the in the rewards of the worthy or whatnot <clears throat> i think they could add um the like an upgraded kind of like what you have to dig for the siege like maybe okay. have upgraded siege that you can that you're able to get either at the end of the campaign or um through the rewards of the worthy or if you place like in the I mean, top one hundred, like or something like that, you get like maybe you have that with the um the ones you scry now. Yeah, but I'm talking about without scrying. I'm talking about like okay. have both, um, you know, and yeah. being able to get that. Um, also like maybe being able to pick your own reward, have it to where there's a key system and and kind of like what the the undaunted has like the key system if you yeah. have the rewards of the word the like at the end of the campaign maybe that's probably the best place to do it have mm -hmm. it to where you get x number of keys depending on how well you did and then yeah. let the person pick up the decide person. what they want to pick up i think those changes would be nice to pvp it'd be very small but <clears throat> they're doable i mean the the stuff is the systems already there with the undaunted keys and the systems already there with the dig siege so if you don't want to change anything in pvp and i understand like what what else is there to add to pvp we'll do smaller stuff like that where yeah you know yeah, like maybe somebody only wants to farm geos out of their rewards of the worthy. Well, I don't need all these like ten pieces of mail with like trash um, pieces of armor that I'm just gonna decon or sell. Maybe I can use my keys instead to buy like guaranteed geos. Yeah, e even that too. Like it doesn't matter. It can be anything. Yeah. Like in like I said, the key system's there for the undaunted, and then the the siege is there through the dig sites. Um, I yeah. mean, if, if if you don't want them to be as OP as the ones in the dig sites are, you could have it just a little bit less. Like, instead of making it, like, a purple, make it a blue um, piece of It could siege. be even something like, those are offensive. Give them, like, special defensive ones, special pots, special... Sure, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything. And, I mean, I, yeah. I really do think that could spice up PvP just a little bit more. I know the hammer spiced it up quite a bit, and I really like that yeah, yeah, that addition. Yeah, bonds, yeah. So, um, I mean that that could be cool to add, you know, just other little concepts like that to the game, and just say like, hey, you know, we're th still thinking about you PVPers, but we're just not gonna put anything big out next year. So yeah, <clears throat> that that would be something to add to to what you uh, the you know in the PVP concept. Uh, what about you, JP? What what would you like to see? Like, what are two things you would like to see in the game that are not there now? I would love a weekly dungeon leaderboard. Ooh, Ooh. Yeah. I think that would be. Let's get my answer. Never mind PvP. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be that. I think that'd be so amazing. And you could actually have, and I think um, you could do it in tiers too. You could have like normal like veteran, CP veteran hard mode or cp like lower cp you could do brackets or normal vet hard mode whatever well i think like mm -hmm. that would include hard modes because you get more point like do you want to take the risk and pull the boss on like the last boss on hard mode or do you want to get the clear because your time's really good like it would leave like some strategy but maybe like normals for lower cp like under 50 like that'd be really fun like while you're leveling your tune up you could compete maybe get some extra like like re weekly rewards or something like that i think that would be like interesting for people to do that'd um, be so fun yeah yeah like even on low level <laughs> tunes like you know instead of just the grind you know like just 
I think because I, I that's how I level. Mo I mean, I don't grind as hard on low level tunes. I just queue dungeons like all day long, anyways. Because I just I find that's the funnest way. I mean, I know there's more efficient ways to grind, but I want to like learn my tune, learn my skills, like especially a new character. Start uh, establishing that muscle memory before you even like start parsing, like on a new tune, figuring out the way I want my bar set up. And I feel like that'd be a fun way to like do it. Maybe you maybe the lower level tunes get XP scrolls at the end of the week. Nothing like major, just mm -hmm. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, I think um, you can have like titles for it too, or whatever for the you know the end game version of it, like some yeah. serious cool rewards. I think. So um, I think it would be good to have, like, you know, kind of like what um, the trials have, like, you know, the weekly trial. Well, the weekly dungeon, and then maybe the weekly under CP dungeon. Because obviously, if you're under under 50 or whatever, you can't do the vet DLCs. Um, so, like, do you think it will be, like, DLC dungeons that they should just focus on on CP? And then maybe, yeah. like, non-DLC dungeons on non-CP? That way, you know, people could still get... <clears throat> the their taste i guess yeah definitely like have have it for both what about like there's all kinds of stuff you can do you could do like random <clears throat> cues too where you don't even know what dungeon you're gonna get there's a point system based upon it and uh -huh. you just get your score and like you know yeah you might get a bad beat and get like you know maybe it's like three different dungeons and that way it's just kind of like you got to play on your feet like you know what i mean you can't completely like optimize like with your group you just gotta like do it yeah cold. you don't know what you're gonna get yeah uh-huh yeah it's like three or four and it's like a random queue that'd be really cool too oh man. that would also keep people coming back <laughs> it's like if you know your team is really good at like fang layer and that's one of them but you don't get fang layer you get like scale caller or something yeah. and uh you know you don't do as well you might be incentivized to like requeue again until you get like fang layer and try to post like that score i think that would be cool too like a rotating thing mm -hmm. like on top of it there's a lot of stuff i i enjoy dungeons the most top 10 team should receive like whatever the gold monthly mask is for that dungeon yeah could, yeah you know. yeah that would be or like uh they could receive the gold shoulder the drop rates are so low or... for people that grind how, it how about you put the top you know top 50 teams get perfected gear out of it out of that dungeon that'd be fun too <laughs> can, yeah. you, can you i mean that would be definitely be a good uh a good way to grind stuff i mean they did they did this while back so why not perfected yeah. dungeon gear perfected though. Yeah, you'll have to regrind. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad. It it's definitely doable. I like the only it. Different, like it wouldn't be hard for them to add perfected gear. All they give you is an extra line of like a stat, so extra mag, extra health, extra stam. Or like recovery, you know, like extra mag recovery. It'd be that jewelry, that perfected gold jewelry that drops. Now you're not mm -hmm. wasting now you're not wasting mats, you know, golden up. Oh jewelry. yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 and would but, actually. But, there, but but it's only available if you do the hard mode. That's the only mm -hmm. way you would get the gold affected stuff, is if you did the hard mode. So <laughs> so basically, if you do the hard mode but don't place in the top fifty teams of the week, um, you would probably get like the purple perfected, right? I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And purple, then yeah, purple for. Yep. And then if you place in the top fifty, then you would get the gold perfecting jewelry that that would be cool i i mean it, be super you, incentivized. Keep yeah, running it you, like do, do you remember though like how it felt like that rite of passage of clearing like v vma and getting like your inferno stack yeah. like perfected like you could kind of bring that back to like eso but in like a four-man content because i'm sure that gear would probably be best in slot you yeah know? so people would be incentivized to get with their teams and it would create more you know interaction with people instead of just doing vma over and over by yourself but like obviously like trial teams a four-man dungeon team right you could break into like teams like within a prog group and and farm your gear together i think that creates more camaraderie but it also gives that feel i remember how good it felt when i got that vma perfected inferno like stuff like that you know like to incentivize like stuff outside of like trials i think would be really good yeah people i mean people are gonna bitch and moan about it because they're like oh we're have we're gonna have to re um farm the stuff but i mean no, that's because you can still complete all the content in the game with the gear that's available right now it's just like that's the thing you can't if you want to min max you can't complain about min maxing that shit drives yeah. me yeah. crazy 
Yeah. Like, like, it's, like it's if you want to min max, you, you want to do you it. Can, yeah, you can beat the game and you can beat most of the content in the game in like crafted gear. But you know, if you want to min max, that was your choice. You know, or whatever. It. I don't know. So that that was really strong. That was your yeah, first. That's your first thing. What is your second thing? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um. I. I don't know. Maybe a new battleground. I think would be fun, like a keep defense type BG. Like oh, a mini okay. Cyrodiil so like a mini Cyrodiil, mini PvP. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like a keep. Like there's a defending team, on the keep, and then an attacking team, and they. It's you know there's some sort of like. Those are the funnest center. fights. Like a three-hour yeah. aspect. Like. <laughs> but ima yeah, imagine a BG like that though, where like each mm -hmm. team defends once, and that's who wins. Like whoever like held off longest or whatever, like that would that would be like the BG or whatever. Like I think that would be like really fun because then now you would eliminate all the lag that Cyrodiil has. So I mean, BGs function fine, but rarely do I ever lag in a BG. Right, because you can control the players, so they can find out, like, you know, is it what's the what's the most optimal, like twelve v twelve, like whatever, like ten v ten. You could make it so it, you know, whatever that cap was, and make it functional, and it's like a keep defense like type of a BG. Well, I, I, like, think... I think that I know they said no PVP content, but you know, I that think... would be a fun activity for sure. That that would be so much fun. Yeah, there's like twelve players that get into battlegrounds normally, right? So like, have it yeah. to where it's six v six. Yeah. You know, yeah that that could definitely be doable. Like I'd see that. I mean, that probably is I not mean, gonna be that bad either. That's not gonna happen though. Because, <laughs> well, of like, course not. It, but, but that would be so fun. Like it would be so fun. So, Bobbio, <laughs> what what do you think? What do you think about this stuff so far? I've I've wanted a two person arena forever. <laughs> That'd be fun. PVE or PVP or both? Both, P both. Both. Why not? Both. But like two person team, like, a, you know, similar to, for PVE, similar to, you know, like a like a VMA or a Black Rose, you know, but you would really at that point, now you're really stressing the two players because you you got to have some heals, you got to have some tankiness, you got to have some damage. And it, it's it's. You know, now you're messing with sets you might not mess with and, and other content. Um, I think there'd be a lot of strategy in it. Um, I would, and, yeah, you know, no, there, think... there's a lot of people, yeah, there's a lot of people that have one or two friends that they play with all the time. That would be perfect for them. You know, now they don't have to go find a fourth or eight other people to go, you know, run a, run a trial. Um, it's kind of that in between, right? So like a two person, two person content would be fantastic. Um, second thing, I don't know. Um, we've been dealing with a lot of. I mean, we've been dealing with the same races forever. A new race wouldn't be wouldn't be a bad idea to kind of just. It'd be short lived, but it'd be a little bit of excitement. Um, you know, and they can build a story and a chapter around how these people, you know, come into the world. I know the so I, the aliens yeah, and then the or not the druids, but the aliens maybe. Yeah, As a you race. do aliens. You could you could do their snow elves in the Skyrim mm -hmm. in Elder Scrolls. Uh, you know, we don't know if the Dwemer are still alive or not. They could flesh out the Felmer a little bit more. You know, we got a taste of them, you know, in, in the in the Skyrim, down in the Blackreach Caverns and stuff. Um, there, There's a dog, there's actually like a dog type race that's not werewolf um, in the Elder Scrolls. Um, Universe. Yeah, there's, there, there's, other, there's other races that they haven't added into the game, which you know, could be interesting. You know, even bring back Akaviri. You know, oh, oh yeah, we think they're cool. dead, but all. You know, cool. we're dealing with a we're dealing with a, a dragon rip. Who who says that we can't bring Akaviri back for some? You know, Daedra. You know, teleports them in from 
from the past or something. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. Merck was saying the other day he would like to see a Daedra, and I'm and I don't who said who said uh, was it one of you that said like that's what Sorks are? I think. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically what swords, swords are. I mean, they, they, they summon Daedra. So, <laughs> he, but he's like, that would be cool to have a Daedra. And, and somebody, I can't remember who it was that said um, that's what Sorks uh, are. So, I mean, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, bring, I mean, I, I still think the monk class is, is a thing. But I know JP's like, no, it's druids. I was the one who said um, bring in Daedra, and you guys said that's what Sorks are, but they they are like magic based characters who summon Daedra. I'm saying you could be the Daedra. Yeah. You get Daedra kills. So you get like transform into like a freaking. The Daedra already exists in Cold Harbor, so they already have like a home. <laughs> I want to eat everyone's sweet meat. Sweet meat. It's that like... be Veladra? Yeah, that yeah, needs to yeah. be an emote. I'm I'm adding one to mine. Like I want that to be an emote in the game. Veladra, <laughs> yeah. your sweet meat. <laughs> Dude, that is. Can I get that? That is be like uh, I think besides Splendor Clutch too. That's definitely one of my favorite dungeons as far as like the the like what people are saying in there, and she she's just awesome. Like whoever did that, whoever did the voice acting for that. I mean, I applaud them. Like, yeah, <laughs> applaud. <laughs> So Bob has the two person arena and then a new a new race. And then JP has the battleground keep and um the what 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 else? Dungeon. The dungeons, the dungeon, dungeon uh leaderboard. Please. Leaderboard. Jen had the PvP um and... Yeah, mine seems boring now because I just wanted stability, but once everybody said theirs, I was like, Oh, theirs is way better. <laughs> fix your damn game. That's yeah. What and, yeah, don't don't give a game headache. And to be honest, though, Jen, the um, as far as like the last changes, they did try that with update thirty six. They didn't change as much, so I think. No. When what, what do you mean no? No, they didn't change. Yeah. Much. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I was like, wait, are we? Oh, this? Of course, all the backlash they received after thirty five. Yeah, is, but I th people weren't ready for any more changes. I think um, even if they change, like even if they took this update thirty six and. Like, just give it a little bit more changes. That's fine, too. Uh, but not as much. Like, just a little bit. You could do, get away with a little bit more, but not as much. Um, unfortunately, mine are not going to be, like, as cool as you guys. But, um, I mean, I'm kind of looking at other portions of the game. I really do think that the one thing that I would like to have the game have for my Christmas wish list is to have more bank space and more housing space. Oh yeah, that's a good one too. Especially because so. I don't uh, subscribe to ESO Plus that yeah. I do crazy amount of storage management on the daily. Yeah. So I know we got a little chest in the house that store gear. Maybe like have something else like that. Um, maybe have like another set of chests. I don't know. To, for storage but also like oh, throw a storage chest in the antiquities go scry one yeah that has like a hundred capacity or 200 I, I would do it like you know how they have you know the... it's like 18 it's like 18 pieces just like yes the wolf. yes yes Dude. that's actually was what i was gonna say have it to where oh my <laughs> god i would be scrying for days to get that shit like it no. i mean i would do it even if it was like tedious work like it's worth it those oh, 100 yeah, spaces me, so worth. to be honest even 50 spaces <laughs> i think Gosh, would be yeah. worth no, my go 100 go 100 go big <laughs> yeah well i mean no, the, I... New, the new new bank space would be nice though yeah for sure yeah. and stuff that you can't store like for me geodes because mm -hmm. i don't do a lot of gear changes with geodes but obviously like i don't want to delete them because i'm going to need them at some point and as a non-eso plus member i can't i can only store 500 on my tune so once I like make a set of gear, like that is spent. So all my tunes right now have all their inventory space full of geodes and I can't bank them and they don't stack. So like maybe we can stack all the purple ones together and then as you open them, it just randoms like how many it gives you. Okay. There's no reason for them to be like 30 on your tune, all random ability opens, you know? 
I mean, you could have it to where, like, the 10 one stack together and then, like, the 50 one stack together. You could have it like that, yeah. too. That way, you know, people aren't, don't bitch and moan about, like, oh, I, you know, I was supposed to get, like, 10 transmutes out of this, but I only got five. But, yeah, that's one thing that I would love to have. Like, it's for Saucy gives us more space in the bank. Um, I think <clears throat> even guild banks, I think, like... Um, Depending on how uh, many people you have in the guild, you know, you have X amount of space. So, like, let's say you have 200 people, like, I think, like, 3 to 350. And then if you have, like, a full uh, guild, like, 400 to 500, like, maybe 800. So, kind of, like, have that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think that was kind of like an oversight. Like, for example, the geodes being like tune locked and they're all locked on your tune because when you open them, they're available <laughs> on any tune. Like the transmutes yeah. on your account. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think that was just an oversight for sure. And something they haven't thought of fixing is that the, all the geodes are just like locked on your character and you can't bank them. So that that's that's what I would love to have is the more space in the housing, in the bank um in you know maybe a chest that like bob was saying you could scry and you know takes 20 pieces or 15 or what you know what i don't care how many pieces the damn thing takes like bring it let's go and even if it's 50 <laughs> 50 slots i don't care i would take it but jen's like go big so <laughs> i'm a non so plus here. go big <laughs> i need space um Another another thing that I would love to have as, you know, I guess the Christmas wish list is, I mean, I, I do like the new class. I wish instead of like one new class, I think they should do two next year, but that's putting a lot of work. Um, I think the, the monk and the druid class would be cool and you could have it to where like they rival each other or something and that's kind of like um i don't know like a conflict that happens and you can make a whole year chapter out of it to be honest and you could even bring the class at different times of the year to to kind of help it so have it to where there's a conflict between you know class two classes or whatever and you make the new class out of those two but they get introduced like maybe one gets introduced in the first half of the year or the second one gets introduced in the second half of the year and then then the last dlc would be kind of like them fighting it out and you know maybe at the end have it to where they make peace or something with each other um kind of following that storyline in a way i don't know i mean i think that would be cool to have like even if it's like druids plus, you know, against elves, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just have it to where the chapter focuses on a war um, between two two societies and you get two classes out of it. That's probably too much for me to ask. It's not going to happen, but I guess I mm -hmm. can dream. <laughs> but speaking of druids... Let's uh let's let's talk about the new druid deck in Tales because damn. Jen, you wanna start? You wanna start this up? Yeah. Um I started right away when the uh the new content came out by like questing and like getting all the fragments for the new druid deck like right away. Um and then I proceeded to play it against the NPCs and the um I don't know what you call him, the champion of that deck. Mm -hmm. And I know they had said something about making the NPCs smarter, but holy, you can just, like, get that druid deck going. And once you start comboing it, it is devastating. But the way to play it against people, like, at first I, I, I messaged you and I said, we can't play this in Tales of Tribute Tournament. It is so strong. But I had been playing NPCs and just, like, comboing the hell out of it when I started playing it against people and I realized like, okay, there's ways to counter this. There's ways to shut this mm -hmm. down. Then, then I was like, okay, I was wrong. But yeah, it's if, if, if left unchecked, it's super powerful, like so much power, prestige and gold. And like, I think at one point I made like 
70 gold and like 50 power in like one hand and it was like over <laughs> like the other there was no way the thing was catching up but that was against like an npc right it was like leaving me unchecked and like letting me get a couple like really strong cards out there and just letting them sit and build and build and build um it's it takes some practice to like learn like which the good cards are that you want and like how to counter them and like when played correctly like if you get the special cards out at the right time and can combo them yeah they can be like super hard to counter you always got to be worried about like if you're playing against it make sure you always have like something making power or gold to get rid of that card you can't let people build into it okay um i mean <laughs> the whole like cooldown system like cards in cooldown is insane mm-hmm oh yeah well you make gold on your opponent's turn with the one yeah it's like super op there there's an order though like there's stuff that's better later on like so like that agent is like if you take it early it's a waste like just ignore it It doesn't do anything you're you don't have enough agents to get the activation gold and your opponent doesn't have it so it's like situational i really like the strategy behind it but like later on in the game that guy will literally go off too. I I've started my turn with like six gold before. <laughs> oh my god! Like, because of, yeah, 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 yeah. It's 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 like a, it's understanding the pick order and what the cards do and when and the situation behind it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. If I like if you play a deck like I honestly like I've six gold to start my turn like, before I got like you know any cards like, pretty crazy. I've had people stuff stuff a bad kitty card in my deck, and I've made like two gold. Two gold, like, yeah. As well. <laughs> and then you rid it, and you make like another like power because it goes back into the cooldown. Pile. Yeah, I dude, it's I like thanks. That's so much value. I try to play the kitty card deck with it too because, like, to be it's honest, agents. it's it's so cheap. It's so cheap, and like the agents are really nice in there too, with it. And I mean, it's. The Sigic deck counteracts the Druid deck. I've uh, I've made like fifty power on a turn before in a ranked like on against an, an, a player. Like you just go off. It looks like a close game. They're at like twenty, and then uh, you know you go to then you combo once, and then you go back through your deck if you're comboing, and then you just like combo again. It's like literally gives you power and gold for buying cards. It's like basically says. That one drew that one agent basically says every card costs one less because you get refunded one gold when you buy a card and it goes into the cooldown pile. So it's like everything costs one less basically is the way to think about it, is how mm-hmm. I think about it. Sometimes. But well, I mean the the turn I know that in the tournament tonight that uh we're gonna have we're not gonna allow the druid duck. And obviously the the light blue deck, the sorcerer deck isn't allowed. But I mean it's it's free game in the Christmas tournament. I think mm-hmm. I think yeah. uh, you know if Is if you're it, are you not allowing the druid deck just because it's still too new for some people? No, they're all being allowed. Um okay. and the new, no, in this not tonight. Tournament, no, right? not tonight. No, not tonight. No. No, yeah. tonight the reason I'm not allowing the druid deck is because like you really do not have to know how to play it and i really do think the older like the not the older but like the more experienced players um will have a big like um advantage, yeah. advantage over like you know some people that are just starting out um i think the deck if you, you can exploit the deck very easily against your opponent that's that's the thing but I really do think that the if you have a spot in this tournament, you know, in the Christmas tournament, you're season you're season enough vet to know how to counteract that deck, um, mm-hmm. or you'll have enough practice between now and you know the the Christmas tournament to make sure that you know how to play against the deck and the strategies that you need to put put forth. Um, yeah for that deck yeah i understand like you'll allow sorcerer and it's not as bad as like when it first came out but yeah like people choosing sorcerer it just makes for a quick game because all you're doing the whole time is spamming each other with Mm -hmm. the agent it's it's like spam the agent play a card if you can still play a card like spam the agent play a card if you can still play a card like it's it makes for a boring game but it's it's still it is playable you know well i mean i do hope that people don't 
start doing that, you know, make it a little bit more of a, you know, cool game to watch. But, uh, I mean, if they want to start doing that, that's fine. We can always mm -hmm. uh, tell them no after after the tournament, you know. Like, we're just not going to have that deck available um, next time, you know. That's, but, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I think, but it... it I mean, it, it it is it is what it is. Like, it really depends yeah. on, you know, what what we want to see. In in the content, I if you want to spam that sorcerer deck that just shows you like to spam and that's how you like to win. There's ways that's, to that's, win. I mean, that's that's a way to play, and that's how some people play. Yeah, they, they love spamming their sorcerer. Um, that's a way to win, but. Also understand that there's other ways to win even when you're doing that. I've seen people spam that and still lose. So mm -hmm. um, it really depends on the combination of agents that are being played and, and such. So hopefully, I mean, people people will give us some good content to, to kind of go, go from. But we'll see. We'll see. The the good part is you do know if Bolt wins tonight that there's more spots available <laughs> for the for the... um so I believe because we already have seats that Bolt and I aren't playing in tonight's tournament because oh. that leaves more open seats available for people to earn seats. Actually, that's the other way around. You guys should play. You guys should play because Bolt technically if Bolt gets the last spot. I mean, I guess it's the same thing, but if Bolt wins, actually, that would give more spots to the higher point people, where if Bolt doesn't win, then you get a winner tonight, and then, you know, the two other spots. So it really depends. It's, it's, yeah, because yeah. it's almost what the same. have is, he, he would, he would be, he would have a seat because he won a, a monthly tournament. Therefore, all his collective points yeah. wouldn't matter, and it would go down the list to the next exactly like, person. Yeah. So yeah. technically, um, you could both play tonight and have it to to where it's better overall. Um, it really depends on what kind of competition you want to see in the tournament, too. You know. Mm -hmm. Because you could potentially help somebody that yeah, you don't... Yeah, because I know we had, like, pretty much, like, the same people participating month over month. So it would be good to, like, open up the spots and get a few more people in there. Yeah. But we'll see how, like, we'll see who, who comes out victorious tonight. And then, you know, um, I know Mrs. Fiddlepont was saying, what about if somebody is tied in points? Um, well, we will be deciding that with a game, you know, the best of threes. So, mm -hmm. if if somebody's tied for that last spot and they, you know, they need to, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like that. It's gonna be a best of three. Right. So, between those two people, but I, I mean, I don't, I don't think um, that's gonna be a big issue. Looking at the points and you know where people are at, um, but. Bolt is, is is not gonna come tonight. Well, he's not gonna have a chance to get some money. He's won money mm -hmm. every single time, every single tournament. Oh yeah, the rewards are fantastic. So the participation rewards. I was surprised that uh that to kinda hear that Bolt isn't coming tonight to try to get, you know, at least two hundred K. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I know he would spend it immediately too. I so. know that's <laughs> Yeah, I'll mention it to him. I'll see what he says and uh maybe he will uh do a surprise show up. He's trying to earn some purse money. So, I do know that JP is saying that he, he will probably commentate the Christmas tournament with me, though. Um, yeah. So, that's going to be... When is it? Um, It's the 18th, I believe. So, let, let, me, let me check. Let me double check right now. The Sunday, December 18th, and it starts at 1 p.m. It's actually... Say, can we... Start yes. It yes. It's it's gonna it's gonna, it's gonna start earlier. Um, I wanted to kind of comment in on all the matches, but I think that's just not gonna be able to be done. Unfortunately, it would be a long one. Yeah, you so. just have to do like highlights until maybe the top three or something. Um, but well, no, we don't. We don't necessarily have to do highlights. We could take you know, um, because it's four four uh, matches that are happening at the same time. Maybe we could have two matches happen. 
and then the other two, and then kind of go from there. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a longer ish tournament. Um, it's still like best of one until you get to top four, so that's that's still gonna be the the norm the format. Yeah. Um, it's still best of ones until you get to top four, but when you get to top four, that's where the best of threes come in. And I mean, who wants that five million gold the most? That's that's really like a good question. Um, mm hmm. And is lucky enough to get it. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll see. We'll see who wins tonight. We'll see who the last spots are. Um, we're gonna highlight it over this week and, um, and such but uh one other cool thing before we wrap this up um the the housing contest that's coming up for christmas did you hear about that jen are you gonna are you gonna participate because i know you like that no i'm not gonna participate but i'm gonna enjoy viewing the houses that have so i mean it's a christmas theme and the house is gonna be a captain Margot's place in dire fall mm-hmm and first place is a mil, second place is 500k, and then third place is 200k. So that's going to be interesting. Um, I know we had the snow globe last year, and uh, I mean, there was some really, really good entries. There were some great entries, oh, yeah. We had a tie for first place. <laughs> so we had a, we had two people tied um, because we couldn't figure out like which one to give it to we were the judges mm-hmm. we were bringing a special judge <laughs> well the all the judges were like yeah this is a tied this is a tied uh, place um both of those houses that were tied in first place were super good they they each had their own like special touch i guess so um well maybe we can get bob to to stop role playing in the eu server and come and do a housing contest I don't know. What do you say, Bob? Oh, good lord! Somebody's gonna need to give me more more gold if I'm gonna compete in a housing contest. That's uh, that's a lot of gold to to do all that furnishing. Well, I mean, if you have furnishing already, like there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. We're, we're messing with Bob. I think I just broke ESO. You... I think I just broke Frost Warden. <laughs> The Frost Warden is pretty strong in this patch. That that's definitely for sure. Um, no, dude, I'm I have Magic of Furnace, Ice Furnace on right now. Where every time you deal frost damage, you get a uh, fire damage, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure it's procking off of all off of uh, it's procking off my frost wall, off my ice shards, and off my Arctic blast, and it yeah, cuts for 7k. Pro- yeah, no, <laughs> but so every time all three of those dots tick, I get three ticks from Ice Furnace. Mm, maybe and that's... I think I think that, and I think the fact that I have an ice staff on with a warden, it's getting the warden buff too because that proc is eight k crits. They're eight k like fucking proc crits. Dude. Have you parsed <laughs> with it yet? You should. No, 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 no. I just picked it up in a dungeon and I was like, hmm, it's a heavy set though, so you have to like front bar. Front bar it, yeah. I mean, maybe that with um, uh, rally or I mean, I don't know, world maybe. Holy hell. That would be Seriously. that would be interesting. It procs off, yeah, dude. It's like the tool tips tip says fifteen hundred, but like the procs are like like four k. They're all every up, second. Yeah. It, it 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 doesn't have a cooldown. There's no cooldown, so it's kind of like how pil- new, uh, it's kind of like how ice warden. <laughs> It's kind of like how Pillar like is like the strongest shit in the game because of like the nerfs to all the abilities, but it's definitely something that should be investigated. The question is, do I want to make all the gold jewelry and stuff just to to parse it? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but dude, it it's literally crazy. Like I'm serious. Like you should see the ticks. Like yeah, I'm just spamming clinch right now. Every it, the dots don't proc it, but like the blade cloak and stuff does. It looks like someone needs to get on PC and test this shit like right now. Like with logs. There you go, Bob. Get get some of your PC buds. Try to test that. I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a thing. Who knows? But you know, unfortunately, this is all for the new. You know, until the new years. Um, our next podcast is gonna be in twenty twenty three. Um, I know you guys probably would love to hear from us before then, but I mean, JP's wanting to to have some fun, in the towards the end of the new year's i'm sure bob and, and jen are the same um 
I kind of want to go what Bob was saying the other day and go helicopter hog hunting, you know, for the end of the year. But I don't know. Is, is that a thing in the winter, though, Bob? Like, it's not. It's not season for it right now. But I mean, that's my personal thing. Like, I would like to do that, but unfortunately, it's not season yet. But well. Um, happy holidays, folks, and, you know, enjoy ESO until then. Um, if there's any questions you guys have for us, um, make sure you guys hit up in the comments for us and like and subscribe to our channel. But, uh, yeah, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, folks.